My life be like. Wow. Yeah. What's up, guys? So today I'm gonna go over how I vertical jig, and I've been jigging for quite some time now. Uh, I would say about. 90% of my catches are all on jigs. Um, one thing being, uh, being a kayaker, we free line a live bait out, and while we're waiting around, we jig. So, I think a key to being a successful jigger is a lot of luck, a lot, a lot of luck. No, I'm kidding. Being, it's understanding your jig, knowing your jig, knowing the action of your jig, how it, how it falls, how it darts up, everything. If it's a clear day out, you could drop it 10 feet below your kayak, pulling up on it and seeing how, which way it goes, and then let it fall back down and just see how it flutters back down. Uh, another way you can do is cast it out and reel it in real fast. And you can see how, which, which direction it starts going when you start reeling it in. Uh, if you guys swim for even better, you can see that really clear how that goes. So, knowing your jig, I think that is really key. Now, as far second key is having a jigging rod um, having the right jigging rod right balance the right the right load that it puts on the jig as you're cranking up and enticing the fish to bite now when you're speed jigging a lot of times you want to go with a reel that has a lot of crank um, this is they said it goes to 8k with a custom uh, jigging rod I have about 30 pound braid to 50 pound four liter uh, I'm sorry, to 50 pound mono, about about 10 feet mono and about 5 feet 4 liter. Uh, the reason I use 4 liter, it's, it's all preference. I use 4 liter because try biting into a 4 liter, try cutting a 4 liter with your teeth, you'll your chip your tooth. But I like using the mono for the stretch and I like using the 4 liter for uh, for the, the abrasion when it hits the ground in case you get into a V you know that's why I like to use about 5 feet for a liter but like I said it's our preference some people love using straight mono some people love using straight full you know me I like using 10 feet mono because of that little stretch and uh, and 5 feet for a liter the thing with mono is that you got to pay attention to your frog if you just landed at AJ you want to look at your line and make sure it's not stretched out uh, for mono will happen when when it's stretched out it'll turn white you'll have like a little cloudy whiteness and you'll see lines through the cuts so what I'll do is uh, first drop I'll test myself which way the jig is falling you want to go the lightest jig possible and you want to cast this out as far as you can so by time it, the current and in, in direction the wind and everything whatever which way you're getting push you want to make sure that your jig is underneath you and that's that's why it's called vertical jigging. You want to keep it as vertical as possible. When you're speed jigging, it just cuts through the column. Versus slow pitch jigging, you got to go with a heavier weight, slowly going through the column. Since the current is pushing me out this way, I'm going to cast behind me. And I got a 100 gram jig jig here, and I'm going to cast as far back behind me. So I know that when it gets, so by the time it gets underneath me, I'm gonna start jig, as, I know it's be right underneath me. So what I do is, is when I let the jig fall down, as soon as it hit, touches bottom, bring all the way around first. I bring underneath, underneath my kayak. So I look at the line, I pay attention to the line. As soon as it stops, I'm gonna close the bell because a lot of time what it does is that the fish will follow it all the way to the bottom. And if, it's, if it sits on the bottom, and they're gonna say, okay, there's something wrong with this fish, it's not moving. So you wanna keep it uh, constantly moving. So right now it stopped, I'm gonna pop the bell and I'm gonna yoke up. I always do a full pull off the bottom and then I start jigging. Now, as you can see, when I'm jigging, I'm not doing a bicep curl motion I'm rocking my arm forward and back so it's more she all shoulder it's kind of like you're cradling a baby cradle cradling a baby so I'm not using my bicep muscle I'm using 
more of a rocking motion. And I'm doing it as a per, per turn. At the same time, one, two, three. Just like that. You notice that I'm not making a full grip. I'm holding it more like a, with my thumb open and my front finger open. And the reason I'm doing that is that I'm allowing myself to stay relaxed. If I make a fist, if I, have a, if I grip it, then I'm now I'm contracting my bicep muscle. Now I'm using muscle, which is gonna cause me to fatigue a lot more faster. So what I do is, you could try this at home. You close your hand, you can see your, close your hand, like grab something, hold something, you can see your bicep getting tighter, versus opening your thumb and your finger, you feel your bicep is more relaxed. So when I start, when I start jigging, I'm gonna start, just like that. I can do this all day. One thing you want to do is, is that you want to make sure that you get a lot of crank because when you're, when you're jigging, you want to, you start jigging, you want to make sure that you pull up all that extra slack. So a lot of time when the jig is falling down, it's going, it falls down, right? And then it goes up and then pauses, up, pauses, up, pauses. So it goes, boom, boom, pause, maybe a slight fall down, boom, slap. If you're pulling it too hard, what happens is I start the jig up faster than uh, if you're pulling it up and you don't have enough retrieve so what happened was you'll foul hook it you'll foul hook it on your line so you go up and then the line is still slack or a lot of times they'll hit your line so you want to make sure you get a lot of you want to get a reel with a lot of retrieve so this one is the Serigo 8K I believe it does uh, 42 per crank so 42 per turn 42 inches per turn I got that behind me, which is a 100 gram jig. We're like in uh, 180 feet. What I like to do is I like to look for anything in the structure, rocky bottoms, um, ledges. Uh, if I see any markings, I'll stop and I'll start jigging right away. Right now the line is cast behind. The beauty about uh, jigging on a kayak is that uh, it's easy to move the rods around you. So I cast this way, I know it's gonna fall right me and I just go around. Uh, if I'm on the boat, then I gotta walk all the way around to the other side. Now I just hit the bottom, it's the line stop, I do a crank, I do a full first hard crank, and I start jigging. There's no bicep, I'm not doing a bicep, I'm doing a rocking. and everything from wahoos to mahi mahi snappers groupers i mean you name our cotton i think the only thing i haven't gotten is a uh a golden tile i just haven't gotten that deep uh to fish for them so again um the key to being a successful jigger it's really knowing your jig knowing your rod and having the right reel for it now slow fish jigging, this is a Ocean Master, it's about uh, 32 retrieve, uh, paired with a Goofish slow fish jigging rod, and it's rated uh, 120 gram jig, max 350 gram jig, and I have a 200 gram jig. Um, so this again, I will cast it out and let it flutter or keep the line tight and let it go straight down. The key is to get the jig down as fast as you can possible. Since this is a 200 gig jig, I'm not gonna cast it that far behind me. I'm just gonna drop it behind me. So by the time it hits a light vertical jig and you still wanna keep the slow pitch jig vertical. So right now it hits the bottom. I already know it hits the bottom. I'm gonna close it, big pull, half turn, full turn. Let it flutter back down. So what I'm doing with the jig, with the slow fish jig, let me show you our jig. Now slow fish jigging, unlike speed jigging, slow fish jigging does the same thing, da -da, all the way up, 
it pulls back down a little bit, go up, pulls a little bit down. So that's why you want to go with a heavier jig when your slope is jigging. Post, pull, pull. You want to use the pull extension to the rod, let it fall back down. Pull. Now how I hold the jig, how I hold my rod is how I hold my rod is that I hold it with my feet and I hold on to the reel and you can see my guides are actually spiraled left and what it does is that as I'm jigging or I'm fighting the fish um, the, uh, the, the, the action of the reel goes towards my arm so it's not going towards my cranking arm so, so and I have the rod underneath my forearm which is now the extension of my arm so now I can feel everything going down and working the column. So right now my rod, my right now my my line is further out, so I'll just start jigging it up now. Or you can just reel in real fast, it's gonna start swirling all the way up, depending on the type of jig you have. So again, this one I'm gonna drop behind me. So by the time it gets underneath me, I'll be good to go. Now it stopped, close the bell. Full crank. Let it. So now I'm working that bottom a little bit. Sometimes you don't even need a crank. You just pull up, let it fall back down. Pull up, let it fall back down. Half turn. Pull up. This is why some people like to use more more crank weight uh, on the slow fish reel. Uh, I believe. I believe in Japan, they go with a low, uh, like about 30 per turn. So it stays on the bottom a little bit more longer as to your crank in it. Again, I'm no pro no, by no means. I'm just sharing my trial and errors with you. My, my, uh, my experiences. Let it back down. I know we I know we work the bottom about about 20 feet, 25 feet off the bottom, let it back down, and then I'll start doing it again until I see my line getting further, further out, and then I'll just start speed jigging it back up. Right now we're in 168 feet. That's that, that's how I do it. If you guys got any questions, comment below. If you find this video helpful, smash that uh, like button. All right guys, thanks for watching. Peace.
Yeah, we got it.